so we've just had uh, someone else join us. Um, this meeting, oh, we've got another here. Uh, so those who've just joined us, this meeting is being recorded to post to the wiki, um, just to let you know. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, going through the recently uh, updated ACK bugs. Um, and thanks to Tiffany, um, who put the list together for me. Um, so we've got a few newly added ones. Um, I think this one is very important. And I think uh, Christine Morgan is the one who found this um, in the new ACK. Um, purchase order line item angularization. Um, it's no longer possible to use the batch updater to update a fund after purchase order has been activated. Um, and we've got a few people here agreeing that this is a regression. Uh, we talked about this <clears throat> um, in the on the original ticket. Um, we talked about this um, being a blocker for removing dojo. Um, so if this is or will be an issue for your library in the future, um, please do come and add heat to this one. Because um, I think this is going to be a, a crucial one. Um, as well, uh, the newly added bugs here, we also have um, that at cost is not available as a column in the holdings view tab. Um, so if that is something that uh, uh, is going to affect you as well, um, do come in and add heat. Um, the act cost does show in item status. I went and uh, looked at that yesterday, but if you're looking at the holdings view, um, it's not a column option there. Um, and please, if anybody has any questions or comments about these bugs as we go through, um, feel free to unmute yourself and speak up or put it into the chat. Um, and actually, I will put this into the chat now, um, just so that everybody has the link uh, for the agenda, uh, if you don't already have it. Uh, so we've got quite a few newly updated bugs. Uh, here we have the ability to move a line item to another purchase order, um, which is not currently um, possible. Um, uh, Tiffany put in information here about um, how she'd like that to work. Um, I think I, I agree with uh, both Tiffany and Christine uh, here. I think you know this would be a very useful feature to have, especially if somebody accidentally puts a line item. Uh, on a purchase order for the wrong vendor. And then we have uh, trying to edit an EDI attribute set fails without or without permissions fails silently. Um, if that affects you, again, come add heat. Um, so then we have the Angular print service or Angular print service prints tiny text. Um, there was a fix for this that uh, I believe has fixed the hold pull list. Um, but Tiffany noted on this bug here um, that the fix doesn't seem to fix it for invoices. So on invoices, um, there, so invoices still print in tiny font. Um, and I think that is 3.8 and up. But if anybody's using an older version of Evergreen than 3.8 and is encountering this, please do speak up. Um, but I think it's at this point, it's 3.8 and 3.9 that are affected by this. Um, so again, if this does or will affect you, um, please do add heat. Uh, next, we have the Angular ACK funds closing the fund pop-up causes grid to reload. Um, so this is with the new um, administration uh, for acquisitions. Um, Tiffany did some timing on her um, live server and I did some timing on ours. 
um, and you're looking at upwards of 20 seconds for the grid to reload if your library has more than 100 funds. Um, Uh, we have another um, wish list one, um, the ability to uh, flag uh, an EDI account as inactive, so have an active flag. Um, this was discussed uh, on the uh, listserv. Um, and then we have the proposal to remove the web brick which um, basically is removing the action trigger version of doing EDI from Evergreen um, so that only EDI attribute sets remain. Um, are people, can we have a show of hands, like who, whether real hand or the Zoom icon, um, who is still using the EDI uh, action triggers, like who hasn't moved to EDI um, attribute sets yet. We are one of the ones that has not moved yet. We haven't completely moved yet either. And sorry, that Mary? Yeah. That was, that was Christine. Oh, sorry, Christine and Mary. It's, okay. <laughs> it, it's so hard to recognize voices sometimes. No, I know. Uh, so Christine hasn't moved. Elizabeth is saying in the chat that they haven't moved. Neither has Ruth. Uh, Mary put up her hand um, saying they haven't moved either. Um, neither has shared. Maybe the better question is, has anybody on this call completely made the move? And I'm seeing silence to that. Um, Elizabeth Davis says we have about half. Um, so I think this is a, a bug that we want to watch closely. Um, Galen was talking about the next steps here in this bug, that the next step would be to announce a deprecation. He's proposing in 310, which comes out, I think beta is scheduled for either the very end of this month or early November. Um, I don't know about others, but for us, we've actually encountered a bug that's preventing us from moving with one of our vendors. And that's kind of stalled our whole, whole process. Um, so we, we may, there may be uh, those of us who want to comment on this bug um, about whether or, or not we're feeling like 310 or 311 is realistic for deprecating um, EDI attribute sets. Um, or possibly, I know that Tiffany, I think, has EDI attribute sets on her list for future ACK interest group meetings. Um, so it may be that uh, some of the discussion, or maybe we need to have more discussion about how to make the move to EDI attribute sets. Um, uh, Elizabeth, if you, uh, if you don't mind me asking, um, have you moved about half because you've run into issues or just because that's how far along in the process you are so far? Um, I won't lie. I uh, am only just learning about acquisitions now. Um, so I think as new vendors are added, we go with the attributes, but if the accounts were already established before the attributes became a thing, we haven't moved those over. So I do have a, a ticket in with our, vent, our hosting vendor to kind of help us navigate that migration. So. I guess I'll know more about what lies ahead and if we do run into any bugs like you you folks are encountering. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping not, but well, <laughs> we've we've run into a bug with one of the Canadian vendors um, that probably most of you or any of you don't use. Um, so I suspect we may be the only ones who have encountered or may encounter this bug. Um, it's something about a character that gets included or doesn't get included in the message that gets sent to the vendor that's messing up the message. Um, I haven't been the one directly working on that piece, so I'm not 100% sure what it is that's causing the issue. Yeah, I'm, 
I, I don't, we don't, I don't think anybody uses Canadian vendors, but um, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so I'll learn That's more probably in the coming weeks. I admit to fear. Um, Baker and Taylor has been volatile to work with before. And once we have things working, I don't like to upset the apple cart. Yeah, it's really hard sometimes to do the switch when everything is currently working. <laughs> Fixing something that's not broken. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna make a note for Tiffany um, that attribute sets are definitely something we wanna continue talking about um, in future meetings. I suspect Tiffany already has that on her list, possibly with a star. Um, anything else about attribute sets before we look at the final bugs on the list? Okay, so I'm going to switch us back here. Um, so here we have what I think is, we're gonna finish with the two really exciting ones. Um, one is that uh, Bill's Act advanced shipment notices that he's uh, demoed a couple times for us um is looking like it will be included in 310 um it has a pull request at the very least um and the angular purchase orders and line items work uh it has officially been merged into evergreen 310 beta um so that will be coming uh with the next version of evergreen um, I'm not sure what will be available as far as servers, um, with bug squashing week at the end of the month. Um, but assuming the bug squashing servers are running, uh, master, um, if people have time, it might be nice to poke around on them, um, just to take a look and see what the purchase order line item interface uh, changes look like, um, if you haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Um, I'm really excited because I know we've had many slowness issues with purchase orders over the years. Um, and I have, you know, all my fingers crossed that this makes a big difference. Um, so that is the recently updated bugs. Um, I'm going to switch us over to our training server here, which of course has logged me out. So just one moment. Okay, can everybody still hear me? Uh, Zoom in my computer didn't really like me opening up uh, another window to grab that password. Yep. Okay, excellent. Uh, so this is our training server and we're just gonna take a look at um, some things and acquisitions with in regards to reports. Um, when our libraries are getting ready to do year end is when we, uh, generally talk about cleanup or remind them about some of the cleanup uh, that they can and should do. Um, some libraries do it throughout the year. Um, some libraries, you know, just don't have the staffing time to look at it till the end of the year. Um, we found that there's a few things that we get libraries to check that we don't even need to go as far as reports for. Um, so if we go into the acquisitions general search, and this may be, you know, something that everybody already does. 
Um, but when we're coming up to year end, we tell our libraries to um, do a search for all of their uh, pending purchase orders. Um, so if I do it by a status, we'll do pending. Uh, to search for all their pending purchase orders because we don't want them to have any pending purchase orders um, when they do year end. Uh, we recommend that all of our libraries uh, either activate all those purchase orders or delete them depending on um, what should happen to the purchase order. Um, we use the um, PO deletion script uh, that Pines has shared to automatically delete our pending POs. Um, for those, they have to be, have the status of pending, have no line items and have delete in the name. And the script goes through and pulls those and then automatically deletes them. Um, if that is something that you uh, don't currently use and are interested in, it's here on the wiki under community resources. Um, and you can find it under the useful scripts here, the PO deletion script. Um, since Tiffany introduced it and we got the script from Pines, it's been super helpful for us because libraries can now set that up. So those um, pending POs that they don't need just delete for them. Um, and they don't need our, um, they don't need us to do anything in the database to get rid of those, at least not um, manually. Um, we also tell our libraries to go through and uh, check for anything that uh, isn't closed. And I have not done this since we switched things. Um, a null close date. Huh. Does not exist. There we go. On our testing server, we've got limited data. Um, so there's no invoices with no close date. Um, <clears throat> but then of course we want our libraries to go through and close those. You could run both of these as reports, um, you know, a list of pending purchase orders, a list of invoices that have no close date. Um, but we find that the acquisition search is just easier for this because then the library staff can deal with the purchase order or the um, invoice right away. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I'm gonna take us into reports now. Um, and I should mention that I am, uh, our training server is running uh, 3.9. Um, just if anything looks uh, different from uh, versions that uh, you're using. Uh, though the reporter looks pretty much the same. Um, so we do shared templates um, across our consortium. Um, on our training server, they're the Greenland templates. On our live server, they're the Sitka templates. Um, and we have a number of acquisitions templates that we've created over the years. Um, if we take a look at them, you'll see they all currently have create dates of 20, uh, 2021, because um, that's when our training server was last reset. Um, I was looking at it. Some of them were created back in 2012 when we started. Um, so I'm not sure uh, if all of our templates are actually being used by libraries and if some of them are even still useful. Um, but we are going to be doing a project in 2023 to uh, do some uh, review of our report templates. Um, and I just wanted to mention it came up on the reports interest group listserv. Um, I couldn't find the email, but it was uh, beginning of April, end of March that it was shared. Um, and one of the people, uh, Allison with the reports interest group, shared a template that you can build to run to see what report templates are being used in your consortium. Um, so it's one of the ones that we're planning to uh, use in the new year to figure out what report templates people are and, and aren't using. Um, so that's not quite ACK, but you know, a potentially really helpful thing um, if you haven't seen that. Um, 
the three main acquisitions templates and I oh excellent um Elizabeth's just saying in the chat that uh it is and uh she's been using it a lot um we've run it once um and then decided it was a 2023 project um so we have three main templates that we use when we get to year end uh line items that have been invoiced but not received line items that have been received but not invoiced um, as well as just your basic fund report by year. Um, the fund report by year, I think with the new fund administration becomes less of an essential report. Um, so if I just take us into acquisitions administration and fund administration. And so we can see here um, with this library, all 21 funds are displaying. We now have the ability to change what columns display. Um, so all of the information that you might run in your fund report, you can actually see on the screen as opposed to just the 15, um, the 15 funds plus some limited um, monetary information. Um, so for those using, I want to say 3.8 for the fund administration and later, um, you may find that libraries don't need to run that fund report as often as they may uh, currently, um, because you can see a lot more information here, which I'm really excited about. Um, but I did run what we have as our fund report. And if we take a look here. Now, is the fund report showing for you? Because Zoom sometimes doesn't like it when Evergreen opens the funds in a new tab. No, okay. I think I can do it this way. There we go, that should now show, yes? Perfect. Um, so we just have a fund report. Um, that's quite basic, the library, the fund code, the fund name, budget, encumbered, spent, available. Um, you can see we don't have a lot of money allocated or in use on our training server here. Um, and Beth is just saying in the chat, we do have some libraries that like to have the fund report emailed to multiple staff. So it's scheduled to run regularly and sent to their staff, those staff. And that's a, a great thing uh, to do, Beth. And especially because you uh, you probably have staff members who get that report um, who may not have the ability in Evergreen to actually go look at the fund inter interface because of their permissions. And Beth's saying, yep, that's the case for them. Um, so basic fund report, um, generally we recommend uh, at the very least, our libraries run this right before they do year end and right after, um, so that if something were to happen during year end, they have a snapshot of what their funds looked like before they ran year end. Um, and then if we come back to the reporter, um, we also have those invoiced but not received and received but not invoiced. Um, so the invoiced but not received, we've got it set. Um, so that it provides, oh, right, and you cannot see this. Here we go. Um, so we've got it set so that it provides um, all sorts of information, hopefully as much information as the library would need to go find um, the purchase order or the invoice. Um, do we have the invoice on this? Well, the purchase order so that they could go um, and then receive the item. Um, and similarly, we have the received but not invoiced. And these two reports I find are really hard to run together because you have to really remember which one you ran last because the names, at least the names we have for them are so similar. Uh, so here we have the received but not invoiced. So you can go to the purchase order, add it onto uh, 
the applicable invoice. Um, when setting this up on our training server, um, I did find that the invoice not received only picks up items that are on closed purchase orders. Um, and I think that's because that's when the encumbrance is released. Um, and so before that it's invoiced because it's on the invoice, but it's not fully invoiced until the invoice is closed. Um, and if we come into acquisitions folder here, um, I'm just gonna go as if I was to run. You can see for this one, all we're doing is the order agency, uh, the status of on order and the encumbrance is false. Um, so it's been invoiced, but not received because it has no encumbrance anymore, but it still has the status of on order. And then for uh, ones that have been received, but not invoiced, we've got the opposite. Um, we've got status is received, but encumbrance is still true. Um, if these are reports that you are interested in, um, if we come back to the acquisitions part of the Evergreen Wiki, um, we have a community reports template page here. And we've got uh, report templates from uh, several different sources. I know Pine, Sitka, and uh, Bibliomation is on this page. Um, apologies if I've missed another one that's on here. Um, but there's all sorts of different uh, report templates that are used by different organizations with information on how to set those up for yourself if it's a report you're interested in. Um, so for example, here's our line items that have been invoiced but not received. And we've got screenshots of both the filters and the display fields that we use. Um, and I think with the wiki, if you click on it, yeah, it actually shows you a, a picture that you can actually read. Um, Cause the one embedded in the page is not quite readable. Um, and Tiffany, it looks like has also included some SQL query queries here. Um, and as you can see, we've got quite a few different um, report templates uh, that libraries can uh, use this as your starting point to recreate templates that other libraries have found useful. Um, I just wanted to flag one other. Um, so we also have a report in our line items folder here um, for identifying line items linked to deleted bib records. Um, that's the one if you've ever encountered where uh, you go to activate a purchase order and it tells you that you can't and there doesn't seem to be really any reason. Um, we've actually even got it right in the description here. This report is used for resolving the issue we're activating if a purchase order hangs at 0%. Um, and it's often uh, because one of the bib records that is linked to the line item has been deleted in the catalog. There have been uh, some bugs about this one. Um, so the first bug was this one. Um, so when uh, bib records are deleted, uh, they don't check the active pending orders. A fix for this went into 3.4 beta. So a lot of circumstances where you'd run into this have been fixed, but we do still have this one. So the auto deletion of bibs doesn't check the active pending. So um, if you deliberately delete an item and it's connected to a line item, it tells you no. But if you've got the library settings, uh, retain empty bib records set to false, um, and so it automatically deletes those for you. It's not checking the active pending orders. So in those cases, you can still end up with these line items that are attached to deleted 
bib records in your catalog, which prevent you from then activating the order until you figure out which of the potentially, you know, 100 plus line items on your purchase order um, is the one causing the problem and go in and uh, undelete that bib record. Um, so for that, we've got this identifying line items linked to deleted bib records report. Um, you have to enter in your purchase order name. It looks for bib records that are deleted um, and the line item attribute name where the name is uh, title. Um, and that's one that's on that uh, list of reports um, if this is something uh, you encounter um, as well. Uh, any questions about any of the reports that we use here at Sika? So that's what I had. Um, I know Tiffany has um, reports uh, again in uh, for it demoing in further um, acquisitions interest group meetings because um, reports was that uh, the number one subject that came up on the survey. Um, I'm just gonna switch us back to the agenda here. Um, so this takes us to the open discussion portion of our uh, meeting. Uh, does anybody have questions, comments, something that's come up at your library that you want to ask about, um, anything acquisitions related? Sounds like acquisitions is uh, going pretty well for everybody at the moment. Um, so if there's nothing for the open discussion today, we can uh, end early. Um, I've got it on, oh, uh, reports question. What type of reports do you have for direct charges? That is a great question. Um, I think not many, if any, um, we, generally tell our libraries not to use direct charges, um, at least not on the purchase orders, because they have, um, there's some issues with direct charges on purchase orders, um, especially if the purchase order is being split. Um, we found that the direct charges don't actually move if some of the items are going to one invoice and another going to a different one. Um, so we only use them on our invoices. Um, and I don't think we actually have any uh, reports around direct charges. Um, does anybody have reports that they run around direct charges, either for the purchase order or uh, the invoice? I'm just going to look and see if we've got any templates here on the wiki. It doesn't look like we have any direct charge ones on the wiki either. Um, Beth, are you able to uh, include some more details about what you're looking for as far as reports, because um, I can ask Tiffany if that's um, 
something that they have and if she can cover that uh, next month. Sorry, I don't really have a lot of details. I have some reports, but I'm not that happy with them. Um, I will add this to the list of things uh, that I'm gonna send to Tiffany um, and ask if uh, she has reports for direct charges um, or if she can talk us through direct charge related reports um, at another time, no worries. Uh, I think, you know, sometimes these are great ones just to get uh, on the list to look at later because we don't necessarily uh, know what's going to come up um, until we start talking about them. Uh, anybody else? Questions, comments, issues you're running into with anything to do with acquisitions? I know we're heading towards our year end. Most of our libraries are um, a January through December fiscal year. Um, are others starting to think about getting ready for year end? I know it's just the beginning of October, but December doesn't seem that far away anymore. All right, well, uh, oh, Mary's saying July to June. So you've got a few months before you need to start thinking about year end. All right, well, everyone, uh, thanks for joining today. Um, we'll be back here next month and next month's meeting be a good thing to have checked. Um, next month meeting is November 9th, same time, probably not the same place. Um, I suspect next month we may be using the Evergreen Community uh, Zoom account. Um, but Tiffany will send out the connection details ahead of uh, the November meeting. Um, everybody have a great rest of your day and see you in November. <laughs>